So thank you very much for the kind words. And I see that most of the people here are youngsters. And so let me begin this talk with some questions. Can you tell me if you wake up fresh in the morning after sleep? So some, some I can overhear some you know, answers already. Another question. Do you sleep the same on weekdays and weekends? Okay. And do you give yourself enough opportunity to sleep? Enough here doesn't mean 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay, so mixed. Right, so my talk today is going to be about sleep, the free elixir. And I would like to talk about the role that sleep plays in health. Right? Now, there are many, many studies which have proven some functions for sleep. And some of them have established that it causes improved attention, vigilance, learning, and memory. You all are science students, you will agree with me, right? Also, it causes body restoration, recovery, energy conservation, effects on autonomic system, body organs like cardiovascular system, endocrine, causes, promotes growth, improves gonadal function, learning memory, synaptic homeostasis, and so on and so on, right? Also, it's said that sleep and emotions have a bi-directional link, meaning if you haven't slept properly, you are a little not too good, you're not, you know, the best self tomorrow. And if you have having an emotional, you know, instability, some problem, you will not be able to sleep. So it's a bi-directional link. And hence, its role that it improves mood is also known. So overall, it improves physical health, mental health, prevents injury, prevents, uh, you know, uh, any diseases or prevention of illness, and so overall increases your performance. And if that be it, then why don't we sleep? I mean, maybe, maybe I can take this question and I can answer this. Maybe your answer would be that I can always catch it up anytime. The second may be that I have the willpower not to sleep and maybe I'll finish my to-do list. Yeah? That's generally what the answer is. But tell me something that do you feel that when you, feel, when you have slept well, you are able to do your work better? Or do you feel that not sleeping and catching up in your to-do lists makes you better? You, you yourself can answer this question, right? So if we know that there are so many functions and research has proven that sleep is important for health, in fact, it's said that probably sleep is the cost that the species pay for the plasticity that it has. So if that be it, why is it that we see this? This cartoon says it all. I have studied all night. I know all the answers. One of you saying in the class thinking, and look at the silly mistake that that person has done. The problem here is that the alertness has reduced, but often the person underestimates his sleepiness. And that is where the problem is. So in these sleep deprived cases, if you ask the person, he'll say, no, I'm absolutely fine. There is no problem. I can work, no problem. I can take decisions, no problem. I can play, but when you put them on research and you actually make them do some critical decision making tasks on a simulator or actually you realize that he is not his best performance. And hence beware of the effects of lack of sleep. Now in this cartoon what I'm going to show you is this is a normal adult sleep. Let's say at 10.30 in the night to 6.30 in the morning. And if you see on the y-axis, I've labeled different types of sleep, that is REM and non-REM, non-rapid eye movement sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. And non-REM is further divided into N1, N2, N3. So what you three see is the various stages of non-REM. As a person goes off to sleep, you can see that uh, uh, immediately after sleep, you can see that the dip happens and the person goes to N1, N2 and N3. And N3, mind you, is the slow wave sleep or the most restorative sleep, right? So you dip into N3 and then you come up and you have a REM episode. So sleep throughout the night goes in cycles of non-REM and REM together. And as the night progresses, what is evident is 
that most of the REM occurs in the latter part of the cycle. So early morning, it's more bigger chunks of REM. So if I sleep at 2.30 and get up at 6 o'clock, which out of the two is getting more deprived? Non-REM or REM? So you're not sleeping at 10.30 like this individual is. Let's say I'm sleeping at 2.30 and I'm getting up at 6.30. So I've got only four hours of sleep. So you, if you see, REM is the biggest chunk which you have deprived yourself of. And my biology students here will tell me, in fact, they were telling me yesterday too, that how REM plays an important role in learning, memory, memory consolidation. So if we know this, then might as well restore your sleep by keeping the duration of your sleep right, right? And now if I try to, you know, this, this what I did was taking my EOG, EEG and EMG sensors when I tried to figure out how the scoring of sleep was. Now what I do is, let's say I just put an actigraphy watch, which is like a watch which monitors activity. And I let you roam around for 14 days and track how your sleep was. Generally what happens is that you find that the activity coincides with the light patterns. So you are active during daytime when the light is out and you sleep during nighttime. This is called as process C, circadian rhythm, right? But if a person hasn't slept well, he would be sleeping long during daytime too. And that is why the process S, which is the homeostatic theory of sleep, that the requirement of sleep sometimes can overcome the process C, also plays an important role. So it's process C and process S together. Why are we talking about it? Because if you sleep in daytime, your sleep quality will not be that good as when you sleep during nighttime because that's what nature has aligned it to, right? So if you take a big chunk of sleep at night, vis-a-vis -vis you take a small chunk of sleep at night and big chunk during daytime, it's not going to be the same. Don't compare it. That okay, I've done my quota just because I reversed it, right? So if you see this cartoon, you can make out that you can trace it for 14 days, 21 days, as much as you want. And sometimes we use it for finding out some disorders of circadian rhythm. But it's very clear that your activity does change with dipping of light or when it's dark, you tend to sleep. And sleep depends on various factors like basal sleepiness. If you haven't slept, if there's a lot of sleep restriction already that you've been doing, there's an individual susceptibility. Some people with little bit of deprivation become little more susceptible. They are, you know, you can see it faster. Most of you will identify if you're susceptible or you're not. In fact, I say that if you're susceptible, maybe you can pick up the warning signs earlier. If you're not susceptible, you push it till the time you end up in a disease or some disorder. So be careful. If you're not susceptible, look after your sleep. If you're susceptible, of course, take treatment. Look after your sleep. Age plays an important role. Motivation, and this was that motivation that I had, that I have the willpower so I can sleep anytime. But remember when you say I have the willpower and I can sleep anytime and let me finish my work, sometimes that loss of sleep will make you take wrong or unhealthy decisions for yourself. So it affects your processing in the sense that you don't take the right options when you have multiple options available and you haven't slept well. So keep that in mind. Posture, of course. And arousal influences. Now, what are these arousal influences? Is activity. If you're working during that time, you are, you're not likely to sleep. Bright light, ambient noise, temperature. If your ambient temperature is not conducive to sleep, you will have problems sleeping. Caffeine, we all know that. And group effects. So if you're sitting together in a hostel with uh, friends, having coffee, you are unlikely to sleep because you're talking, you have all probably all the possible things with bright lights and your noise is high, so unlikely to sleep. So if you want to sleep, make sure you make it, make the environment conducive to sleep. And so this is the awareness, which is the first step to take control of your sleep. And after such kind of an awareness talk, I had this bright student, it was a high schooler talk, so, you know, one bright student just raised up the hand and said that, Madam, where do I have the time to sleep? I'm taking classes, I'm going for extra classes, then I come back and do my assignments. I have no time to sleep. 
So my question was only one. I asked her, are you able to manage your assignments in a better way when you have slept? Or faster when you have slept? Or is it that you are able to do it when you have not slept? And you should have seen that twinkle in the eye. And she said, ma'am, I have understood. I will make sure that I get some protective time to sleep. So moment you give yourself protected time to sleep, meaning you have taken charge of it. And that is what is important, to take charge of your own sleep. If I give time to eat, why am I not giving time to sleep? So this is the second step to improve your sleep. And third is the principles of sleep hygiene that you must follow when you're taking charge. So the principles of sleep hygiene are that you, you should sleep and you should wake up at the same time regularly. You should be uh, avoiding stimulants like coffee, alcohol before sleep. You should be indulging in relaxing activities. Do not use bed for working or doing your assignments. Use it only for sleep or sex. Indulge in your habits which are sleep promoting before your sleep and not causing an arousal. We have already seen how arousal influences can affect meals. Not before, just immediately before sleeping is not the right time. So these are some simple principles of sleep hygiene, right? You can Google it, you can find out about that. But follow them is the second part of taking charge. And then read or learn choices. Now what do I mean by read or learn choices is that you must know like what should I do after this? Okay, I found out that I need to take care of my sleep. Now what? So what I can do is self-help measures like write sleep diary. Sleep diary is a very simple instrument. Relaxation techniques, specific problem to be addressed. And what is sleep diary? A simple illustration, there are many versions available on net, but I'll just show you one of the illustrations. Simple record of your daytime and night activities. So daytime activities and night sleep. So how it does it go? Exercise, naps time and duration, alcohol, number of pegs, tea and coffee, your last cup of coffee, feelings, how was your day, food and drink, medications or sleep aids, bedtime. Do this just before you go off to sleep. And then wake up in the morning without seeing the alarm clock. Note down your bedtime, your wake up time, time spent in bed, not able to sleep after lying down. Now this does not include your device time, right? So this is the time when you decided to sleep after going to bed. Then you write down sleep breaks number and what is the duration of this number. Then quality of sleep. So let's assume when you slept absolutely good, it was 10, maybe many, many years ago. Today, what is it? 6, 5, 4, 10, what is it? So write down that and total sleep hours. So total sleep hours would be the time, the wake up time minus the sleep time, bedtime, minus your time taken to sleep and the breaks. So whatever the number is. And you will find out that there are many factors which affect this. You yourself will become educated about your sleep. So do it at least for two weeks because it will give you two weekends. Preferably include the weekends in the sleep diary. In fact, you must so that you have that waxing, waxing and waning pattern and if there are some you know, issues, you can be able to pick it up. Simple, easy to do. And now once you have found out if you have a problem, fix it. How do I fix it? When do I require medical advice? Unexplainable irritability and mood swings, reduced attention, reduced vigilance, emotional instability where I'm not able to understand or let's say somebody whom I know is not able to understand. Concentration is reduced, excessive sleepiness during daytime without any reason, not feeling fresh after waking up, snoring, abnormal behavior or movements during sleep or dip in academic performance are all subtle guidelines which will let you know that you require help. So what else can you do? Let's say you're not able to uh, sleep or there is a problem but you're not having these problems. You can take control by some non-pharmacological approaches like sleep education, cognitive behavioral therapy which is done by a trained therapist where sleep restriction, stimulus control, relaxation techniques, progressive muscular relaxation is a part of it and some cognitive structuring with behavioral treatment is given. And I'm going to tell you about another thing in which I have worked which was yoga nidra. And this actually, this twist of mine started when I was given this opportunity from my services. And with the help of Bihar School of Yoga, 
I was able to uh, formulate a therapeutic model with which we were able to bring about a change or I would, we were able to demonstrate an effect and it got published in a scientific article where uh, we were able to present this therapeutic model as for chronic insomnia. So what, did, what was it all about? Yoga Nidra practice in the morning hours, not in the evening hours. In the morning hours when you are alert, Supervised sessions, five of them initially under control, under supervision. And if there is insomnia, please do it under the if under the supervision of a physician. These supervised sessions, how did you go, how do you go about? What we found out is that not only did we find that there were reports in the insomnia patients, but when we did a study and we found uh, it, the effect of yoga nidra in subjects. What we were able to prove was, if you see this diagram, on the left hand side is the pre yoga nidra, which was four minutes before the yoga nidra practice during wake time, yoga nidra, and the post yoga nidra, which was after the yoga nidra practice. What you see are the topo plots of the delta frequency. The power spectra density have been plotted, and this was all done using EEG acquisitions. So there was an averaging of the frontal area, central area, parietal, occipital, temporal. And with that, we found out that if you see rotation of consciousness, there was an increased delta which was happening during the rotation of consciousness. So now why should you know, as a biology student, most of you would know that delta increases during sleep. But throughout this practice, the person was awake. He wasn't sleeping as per the ASM criteria. So why this delta was increasing? And that got published because we postulated that it's probably the local sleep evidence which this practice was giving. But it was interesting. Local sleep in the morning during the practice caused improvement in the sleep at night. So let's not go there, it's another talk altogether. And that began my tryst and so now I have another funded project by DSD Satya. So this is how you can fix it, right? Now once you've fixed it and you realize that still there may be some loopholes, relook at it. If you require help, take help. But finally what you need to do is to light up and fire that avatar of yours which is after a good sleep. And I'm sure that is much better than what it is with lack of sleep. So thank you very much. I hope that you remain healthy, happy, and sleep well.